working on this uh, glove I got to sell. This is going to be the index finger. Now this glove will have a slightly longer finger stall than most of the gloves I build because um, this guy has just a little bit more of a longer hand than, uh, than usual. And most of the templates are made for the type of hand that uh, I guess is like a medium size, regular basic size hand I guess <laughs> is what Robert England has. So what I've done is I just altered the templates a little bit and there you go. And uh, yeah, what I'm doing right now is annealing this so it's uh, easy to bend and form, which I've learned. You guys are with me when I learned that. And also, for those of you that are going to do this, this actually also discolors the copper to make it uh, look more worn and uh, discolored and because you definitely don't want it all shiny. So, yeah. And uh, what I do is I usually go to it's red hot and then the ash will build up on it and then when it cools. I had uh, Mexican food today and while I was there, I picked up this. Um, I was gonna eat it earlier, but I had eaten, I hadn't eaten all day and when I got my food, I had uh, four taco things and um, pretty much like passed out and went to bed. So this is I'm eating this a lot later, but I've had this at the uh, other other um, Mexican place called El Maguey. This came from a Mexican place out here called Patricio. So I wonder how it is in comparison because the one at El Maguey is really good. Oh, it's pretty good. Um, I didn't eat all of it because it's, uh, it's quite a bit. So I'm actually just going to put this in the fridge. Yeah. All right, so um, hungry again because I ate really early this uh, afternoon. So I have this leftover. I was going to cook this this morning, bacon, but uh, I didn't get a chance to. Part of the reason I didn't eat all day. I was uh, busy. Went down to go see my uncle because I thought it was his birthday today, but it's not. It's actually uh, Friday. I ran out of bacon jerky that Santee gave me, and that usually stops the craving. It's okay. I'll have to, uh, after one day, get to Arizona, fly over there, and go see him and get some more. So, yeah. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is put it in the toaster oven. Oh, great. You know what? I almost grabbed that. And that's sitting right on top of here. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure that thing is hot, hot. that does it this is gonna be like the cooking show I'll close it and then I'll cut away and then we'll be opening it again <clears throat> back out here um, I actually was going to use some uh, other parts that I had for this but it wound up not working out uh, I thought maybe they might have, they could, they might work, but they didn't. Uh, so I'm, I had to, I'm just, you know, cutting out the, the pieces here. I'm gonna see if I can get this. For some reason, this actually did not, um, it did not anneal the first time. So let me see if it works now. Set up the camera right here. Got the pipe right here. I don't know if you can see that. 
and I'm going to see if this actually had worked. Okay, that's much better because when I tried to do this the first time, it didn't uh, it didn't bend very easy. Okay, so heating it up on when it's on flat surface did not exactly work out good. So you got to do it do it on when you, you know, what I do is hold the hold the piece up with pliers and and then heat it till it's red. Looks all right. Um, for some reason, I had found that making the smaller fingers, uh, for some reason, is a lot harder than to make the the uh, middle and ring finger. The index and pinky fingers are the hardest to to make. I'm not sure what it is about that. You almost seem it almost seems like it would be easier because they're slightly smaller, but uh, for some reason they're harder to do. And um, so, yeah, this is just the initial bend right here. See, it doesn't quite fit yet together, so. Make sure it's all the way around. Take a look at it. Do some minor, minor adjustments if I need to. Okay. Three quarter inch pipe right there. Okay. Okay, do some trimming and it'll be ready to go. Alright, so one of the key points in having the hole puncher when you're doing this is um, the finger stall itself, once you punch the holes in there, it's nice to be able to dry fit the two pieces together, kind of line them up where you want them, take your sharpie and mark right there because that was the biggest issue with making these things is not having these the holes line up so the hinge does not when it hinges it doesn't work good um, and then when you install it it uh, the articulation is, is really bad it doesn't flow nice and easy like it should so now when you do this, you go put it back, it lines up. Okay. So I have the rivets right here. Cool thing about this is that um, I like to just kind of do whatever um, to these I love designing them I love designing the look because each one is my own personal uh, look to it okay test this out seems to be okay it'll work itself into if it if it, if there's anything dragging all right but yeah you get to kind of design and play around with it all right and we're ready to go Hey guys, and I'm um, going to go ahead and close out the vlog, but before I do, I'm going to talk about a movie, as we uh, try to. <laughs> um, almost going to run out of some of the movies that I got laying around here, so I have to drum up some new ones. <laughs> but I thought this was going to be, this would be a little, uh, uh, kind of a cool backstory for me, and a little bit of history that you probably may know, um, or you may not know. Alright, the movie in question is A Fistful of Dollars. Clint Eastwood. This is really uh, a lot of people believe this is you know this is really his breakthrough right here. 1964 um, spaghetti western they call these. Really cool. This is the first installment of the Man with No Name uh, series that he was doing. Then the course of course after this one, what was it? 
for a few dollars more the good bad and the ugly and you could you could say I don't know would, would High Plains Drifter be in there somewhere because he didn't really have a name in that movie so all right really cool movie a little backstory before I get into it um, is I had this uh, my dad got this movie for me on VHS uh, long long ago and he got it from a friend of his and it was and it had some sort of issue with the 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 picture it had this like weird jumpy thing to it it just didn't work right and I actually wound up taking it to a video store which uh, I knew the guy that owned it quite well and he was opening it up and and uh, tinkering with something inside of the tape uh, something with the, the metal bars that push I don't know it was interesting uh, he was trying to fix it and what was wound up he said you know you got to adjust the tracking on the v a VCR <laughs> you have to adjust the tracking um, it worked for a little while but I, re I do recall some of those tapes those VHS tapes I, I mean you really could watch them so much they would wear out I had a couple that were just worn out and they didn't work anymore <laughs> so, um, but yeah that's I remember that distinctively and uh, it was this uh, this similar to this cover so and of course I got these on blu-ray I saw these uh, this this one and um, for a few dollars more these were at uh, Target for like five bucks or something I just I mean how could you turn that down I at least for me couldn't turn that down so had to get it really cool movie uh, the story uh, is really awesome and here's the part that you may or may not know the story is actually not original uh, the story came after before this uh, by Akira Kurosawa a Japanese director that made a movie called Yojimbo and that was a 1961 starring Toshiro Mofuni this is actually a copy of that uh, Yojimbo was the first and that story and that just that you know it's just that if you think about that story stranger guy comes to town plays both sides of these you know this kind of crooked uh, thing going on and then you know finds the girl frees the girl they beat him up because they they think he knows where the girl is that that basic uh, premise here's something other cool much later Bruce Willis stars in a movie called Last Man Standing. Um, it's a, it's a kind of an outlandish uh, action flick. If you just like to, if you just want to see straight up just action and you like the old school guns, uh, Last Man Standing is not a bad film. I like Bruce Willis plus Bruce Willis is pro gun. Um, Bruce Willis basically runs around this movie with a couple of 1911A1s and just uh, does away with all the bad bad guys uh, completely. Uh, like I said it's just like so um, out there Walter Hill is the director and I actually like his work Walter Hill has also done a, another movie that I really like called Trespass and it's got William Sadler in it and Bill Paxton um, that's just a kind of a really neat movie I've always liked it it's kind of it has that um, Tales from the Crypt feeling uh, Walter Hill was also involved with Tales from the Crypt in the 90s I really like but yeah this same same kind of premise uh, that Last Man Standing is uh, you, you start to realize it's like wait a minute stranger comes to the town I mean this is a whole bit it really is so it's kind of neat to see all of these and how they all follow each other and uh, it all coming from Akira Kurosawa and Yojimbo so kind of interesting little uh, bit for you so yeah I'm gonna get out of here I'm currently just trying to work on the build for that guy uh, building the glove uh, it's a uh, it's just been uh, kind of you know just a slow process I haven't really been messing with it I, I just that's the way I build them now I don't sit there and try to hammer it out in one session although I could but I just noticed that it goes easier when you don't when you just kind of go back and forth to it so we'll see how it turns out um, I hope to hammer it out uh, by the end of the week and see if I can they'll put a little extra money in my pocket and uh, it's gonna be a nice uh, kind of a, a little bit of a recoup of some money that I've got into it so it's uh, it's really neat I've been fortunate to not have to purchase uh, a lot of money in copper 
you know, really just buying scraps and thanks to Cody with the uh, delivering the pipe pieces that's always been good so yeah and uh, something I kind of felt you know the far as the blades go uh, you know I kind of like the 22 gauge uh, sheet metal for the blades it, it's you know yes it, it's a little more flimsy but everything but you know the 16 gauge is nice if you want to build a glove that can do some stuff as you saw with the testings on it and everything but um, you know it's really not that necessary with the lighter blades you're easier I mean really in the end it's just a prop it's just a, a something you can mess with if you wanted to but really just sit there like this and just look cool so Anyway, I'm going to get out of here, and uh, that's going to be it. I think in the future, if I do build a glove for somebody and they want the 16-gauge uh, sheet metal blades, I'm going to have to charge more because it's just a little bit more work, definitely a lot more work to um, get them cut out. So actually, before I get out of here, I wanted to show Santee something. Um, this right here, Santee, that I have, and I have not even opened it. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll save it to... Um, for a little while because I um, I have a couple laying around here somewhere and uh, it's a speed loader for model 29 and guess where I got this at Murphy's in Tucson Arizona 